Hello and welcome to today's video. So on the workbench, well, at least down in the basement, we have the Richmond Hybrid Electric Water Heater. I uh, installed this about three months ago as a replacement for our gas water heater, which um, is about 19 years old, had rusted out and was leaking. So it was definitely time for replacement. Uh, like I said, this is an electric hybrid water heater. So the electric part, we've got the two 5 kilowatt resistive heating elements here. Um, but the hybrid part is the top section here is the uh, is a heat pump. And these are really, really efficient. So this is this water heater, when it's running in heat pump mode, it's actually rated at 370% uh, efficient, which seems <laughs> ridiculous, but um, because the heat pump takes heat out of the ambient air, and puts it into the water. It um, for every I, I believe the heat pump on this is 500 watts. So for the 500 watts coming in, you're essentially putting 1,800 watts of heat into the water, versus the uh, resistive elements, which are like you know 99.9% .9 efficient. I guess there'd be some losses in the electronics board and the relays and wiring and stuff, but uh, they convert. You know, it's a one-to-one, -one, almost a one-to-one -one conversion for heat. Whereas the heat pump, you can actually have greater than one efficiency. So, yeah, it was working great. Uh, typically, we just run off of the heat pump. And unless you, you know, run a bunch of back-to-back -back showers and a bath for the kiddo and you got the washing machine going and dishwasher, it, it rarely ever kicks over onto the uh, the resistive elements. It should be running off the heat pump all the time to be the most efficient especially when you have it in energy saver mode, which prioritizes the heat pump. But unfortunately, we've got uh, this blinking service here. If go to our status. Uh, there's no demand right now. Um, ambient temperature is negative 40 degrees. So it has an ambient temperature sensor failure, which is unfortunate. <laughs> Um, I called up Ream, or, well, uh, Richmond, which this is actually manufactured by Ream, and um, they uh, they said, "Well, contact your installer." And I'm like, "Well, I, I'm the one that installed it, so I guess it's on me to fix it." <laughs> so yeah, we've got uh, all of our air codes here. It's all ambient temperature sensors failed, a and they don't have my water leak sensor installed but that's just a warning <laughs> so yeah um so the goal here is to see if we can fix it they've conveniently given me a uh let me see if i turn the light on here Oop, there you go a schematic yeah you can see i installed this february 29th leap day 2020 that's when it came online but we're looking for ambient temperature sensor which is the white white wire so hopefully we can find that um, we've got evaporator temperature discharge temperature and suction temperature for the heat pump but uh, the only one that's having the problem is the ambient temperature sensor I'm really hoping it's just you know a bad crimp or even if it's a bad th uh, thermistor uh, it's the ambient temperature sensor. We could just fake that out with a resistor and it'd be fine, right? Uh, it, we're down in the basement. We're not going to get cold. And uh, People install these like in their garage or in their shed. And if it gets really cold, the heat pump shuts down. And it uses resistive elements because there's not it can't efficiently pull heat from the air at that point. But um, yeah, hopefully it's not the actual board that's dead. That would, that would be bad because, well, I guess I could just... It, it's under warranty you can have them send us a new one but um yeah so you know hold on for one sec here had to switch to the wide angle mode here but uh we've got uh supposedly it's these four screws here and then there's four more screws that just go around the circumference kind of see them here and the top will come off so the ambient temperature sensor is going to be on the intake side here. Uh, this is the exhaust side here. So air blows out here. So we take in, there's this filter. So I'm hoping I can just take this off. Um, I did kind of 
bolted in pretty good so I used conduit and everything when I wired it so uh, hopefully I can take that off and get it I'd like to be able to take the cover and rotate it over onto the shelf back there and yeah we'll see <laughs> but yeah that's the next step gonna go kill power to it and uh, see if we can't pop the cover off and see if I mean the, the intake or the ambient temperature center should be in here somewhere Success! We're inside. So I just got it peculiarly held up with this clamp here. And I uh, moved my light over so you could actually see in here. Uh, this side, not much going on. Just the uh, exhaust fan pulling through the uh, radiator here. Which, oh, let me flip back to not a wide angle. It's always amazing to see how much damage there is. Well, it's not really damage, but you know, the fins getting all bent up just from assembly. It looks like somebody put their thumb there or finger and yeah yeah you'd think that take better care of it but uh anyways this is what we're after here so it looks like this is it the two white wires temp sensor there's another one uh down in this corner here that's the double yellow one i don't remember which one that actually is and there's some more in here somewhere, but uh, it's the one we're after is right here. So it looks like I can unplug that and actually check the sensor, which would be convenient. Check the resistor. It looks pretty fancy. Huh. So I went ahead and took the temperature sensor out so I could test it. And uh, it looks like it's around 10K room temperature. And it uh, looks like it's working perfectly fine. So I don't think that the temperature sensor is the problem, so it's definitely going to be wiring or the board. I really hope it's not the processor board. Uh, just to check the crimps, I ejected the pins out of the connector, and yeah, they look, they look really good. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with those. So I was able to get the connector off on this end and uh, look at these crimps and they look pretty good too. They're... Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a crimp problem. They're on there pretty good. I pulled on them. So that's not it. So I hooked up my ohmmeter across the, uh, the two leads that go down to the uh, processor board. And I'm reading 10.58, 10.59 kilo ohms, which seems reasonable to me, given that uh, the temperature sensor was around 10K at room temperature. So, yeah, they'd have a voltage divider between the two, probably in series. And then they're reading that with their A to D. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I've been wiggling the wires around and... Stays pretty solid. So I think is it possible we just have a loose connection? That was all that was wrong. I mean it's a latching connector. I mean it it was definitely latched, but maybe it was just a little bit of corrosion on the contacts. I don't know. I guess I'll put it back together and power it up and see if uh we're still reading negative forty degrees. I haven't I haven't put the cover back on, but I powered it up, and um, yeah, looks like I'm not blinking service error anymore. And um, ambient temperature is now reading seventy eight point eight, which it's coming down because I I was handling it when I put it in, so it probably raised the temperature up a bit. But yeah, it's starting to fall in line with all the other ones, which are sitting at ambient temperature so maybe it was just a loose connection or it wasn't loose maybe it was just bad oh heat pump just came on compressor came on Should cool off our ambient temperature at least. Yep, 
yeah, I mean, it's working. Cool. Alright, well. I guess that was it. That was pretty simple. I just gotta put the screws back in. Yeah, like, I haven't put the cover back on yet. It's still loose. Just probably gonna make this thing horribly not efficient. I'm probably leaking a bunch of air out the side. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it looks like it's working. It's definitely better than negative 40. Okay, so I went ahead and put all the screws in. You can see my alignment marks there, so I can make sure I got it back together right. We go into our status, sensors. Yeah, looks like we're working. 70.6 degree ambient temperature, which I would believe. Discharge temperature is up at 130.7 degrees, so we're definitely heating up the water. Uh, Tank, upper tank is at 115.2 and lower tanks at 98.4 so uh, those should be warming up and um, our suction evaporator temperatures are pretty close together I guess that's what it's supposed to do <laughs> but uh, yeah it looks like everything's working now oh I went ahead and cleared all the air codes out so if we have a problem with the temperature sensor it'll log it again it'll be all new but uh yeah, nice and quiet, working. So yeah, I don't know, maybe it was just, I guess it was just a poor connection in the connector. I mean, it was, they're crimped nice. Uh, we're plugged in, it's a locking connector. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> it's working now. We'll just keep an eye on it. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.